Hey y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. I hold in my hand a Volvo key to one of the most iconic cars of all time. Yes, I said it. The Volvo 240, in this case a 244DL. Very common spec here in the US like this, especially in this color. But those hubcaps, these were everywhere. Uh, Addicted Motors just picked this one up yesterday actually and threw a roof rack on because roof racks are cool on Volvos. Man, it looks good. And as you can see, it's a slick top. These are the way most of them came in the US. After 1986, they had these, these giant one-piece headlights. Prior to that, they had the smaller uh, square ones with the turn signal lens below it. These came with a 2.3 liter four-cylinder with 114 horsepower. And you can see they tried to modernize it by doing like the blackout trim here around the windows instead of chrome, which it would have come with earlier. And this one's actually a fairly high spec one um, in the fact that it's got power windows uh, and rear headrests. I don't remember seeing too many of those, but again, no sunroof. Um, and then when we go inside, you can see it's got factory heated seats, of course, and it's an automatic, but again, a lot of them were. So it's got 147,400 miles on it, but uh, from what I've been told, that number is not accurate. But these things run forever. They really do. These things are absolutely tanks. And they're also known for yeah, the trunk. Yeah. cavernous trunks. And you know, this one's a work in progress, but you can see uh, it's nicely carpeted. And it's got plenty of room for just about anything you need in a mid-size sedan, especially from this era. Although these came out in the 70s, were made up through really the mid-90s. They, they stopped making them for the US market in 1993, I believe. But what a cool ride. And even better, I have never driven one of these before. Let's go take it for a spin and see what happens. I gotta stay here in the neighborhood because the brake lights aren't working. So hopefully no one runs into me. There she is, bringing to life. No tachometer, of course. AC, ACing. So you can see there's the AC switch there, temperature control and all that. Um, airbag, of course, and then of course the, the power windows, which a lot of these in the US came with crank windows. I'm sure in the rest of the world, most of them did, but this is a US spec car. So these kinds of things happen and Volvos were an upscale brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights. So at least the rear lights are on in this car because again, I will be driving it without brake lights, but you can see the interior's got plenty of room. You've got a fold down armrest in the back. You've got those headrests that look like they will absolutely hurt if you use them. This blue velour, I was just driving my buddy's 91 Roadmaster state wagon and it also has blue velour, but um, actually they both held up pretty well. The, the GM upholstery from that era really did fairly well. And this obviously, I mean, it's a Volvo, um, you know, it's gonna hold up well. You got a you know smaller glove box here. You can see, I can get it open. Someone did a little uh, homemade rattle prevention there, but otherwise it's, it's felt lined and it has a light that's not functioning at the moment. Um, the radio is not currently putting out sound, but it does turn on. Something else we're gonna have to figure out. You got a little tray table here for oddments. Another felt line thingy down here. And oh, wonder your wonders. An ashtray, which you can't open all the way when it's in park. So make sure you do all of your ash, um, get rid of your ash, you know, in the ash receptacle when you're actually driving the car, because that's safe. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, no visor mirrors here. Um, it's interesting that the side's black because it matches there. And then the light gray, whitish color to match the sunroof. Seat belts are not height adjustable. I guess that was still a ways to go. But all in all, a very, very safe car for the time. All right, we can get y'all mounted up to the windshield. We'll go around the block here. I'm not gonna put my seat heater on today. It's, uh, it's about 87 degrees out. There's a car coming by. And since I have no brake lights, I'm gonna let them go past. Just, you know, because safety third. It is around 5.30, so people are getting home from work. Yeah, I mean, gets up and moves, uh, you know, it's a three-speed automatic. Uh, it's at 114 horsepower out of the 2.3 liter, tur uh, uh, sorry, four-cylinder, not turbo. That would be cool. They did make those. Um, they didn't have a ton more power, but you could do some aftermarket boosts to them to get them to give some more power. Um, yeah, it, it, it feels fine. Again, I can really only go around this neighborhood. The Speedo is working, just the, the, the uh, odometer isn't. So I do know how fast I'm going. Right now I'm going about 30, which is fine for neighborhood driving. And it's a freshly paved road. So 
I, I can't really experience it on bumps just yet, but if we're lucky, and I know where I live, I'm gonna get lucky. We'll be over a pretty nasty um, bump here in just a second, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look like it's been paved yet. Nice turn signal indicator with a nice click. At least the turn signal work. And self-cancel still. Yeah, it's a, it's a raucous engine, but uh, it was designed a long time ago, and it still does exactly what's supposed to be. Fuel injected, you know, by the late 80s, these engines were robust, reliable, and were found in pretty much every Volvo product, with or without a turbocharger. Um, this with a turbo would be a lot of fun. I would love to drive one of those, especially with a stick shift. Uh, Tyler Hoover had a 740 wagon with stick shift turbo that he ended up painting in, or having wrapped in a crazy art, art scheme. And um, I definitely emailed him and was like, if you sell this, I want first dibs. Um, unfortunately, he didn't respond and did end up selling it. So shame on you, Tyler. You know I'll pay your car. I bought cars from you before. So that would have been nice, but you know, that wasn't meant to be. I believe that one was black to begin with, but you know, the, the turbo and the five, uh, actually I think it was a four speed were really interesting. That's where I wanted to be. This you know, is an automatic. It's totally fine for driving around town, which is what most people would do in this car. You know what? I'm gonna turn the seat heater on. Oh, oh, there we go. The light came on. I'm gonna see if my seat gets warm. And I've got a like gully to drive through here. It's perfectly comfortable. I'm sure the suspension is not in the first flush of youth, as they would say, in this car. I mean, it, it you know, for, for a 50 year old design, this really handles well. I, I, I like it. I get why people love these cars and why they continue to drive them and, and do for hundreds of thousands of miles. You know, I, I know a lot of people prefer the wagon version, which is totally fine and totally understandable. They're cavernous for, for their size. In the rest of the world, these are big cars, but in the US, they're, they're not. Um, I'm not feeling any heat coming out of that. So we'll go ahead and turn that off just so we don't set the poor car on fire and, and Troy will never let me drive one of his cars again. But I do want to thank Addicted Motors uh, for letting me drive my first time in a Volvo 240 series. I mean, you know, you can still pick these up pretty inexpensively. If they're in good shape, they do go for several thousand dollars, which is, which is good to know because you never know when you come across one. I think I paid just a few hundred dollars for this, really, and it's it's turned out to be quite a nice car. I mean, I'm enjoying it. The AC works, which is absolutely necessary this time of year. I would not even consider buying something unless it was just to keep for a little bit of time without air conditioning uh, in the summer where I live. It's just, it's really not an acceptable thing to, to have it not functioning. And I mean, you can't beat that for the price that he paid. I'm gonna link to his video in the description below so that you can see it. But, so I've got it floored now and there's not a whole lot going on. Those little hamsters are trying really hard to get to Ikea, but uh, I don't think they're gonna get any Swedish meatballs tonight from the Ikea commissary. Brakes are good. This probably has uh, drums in the back because of the era, because of the age of the design. And, you know, you know it probably needs a tune-up, but it, it got up and went. It's, you're not gonna ever win any drag races in this car. Well, unless you're against, you know, one that's broken but it's a good solid ride and I, I really enjoy it I, I, I kind of want to take it on the highway but I understand I can't you know I, I'm not gonna risk it with, with the broken brake lights that's just absolutely not worth it at all um, I'm not gonna risk my life someone else's life and and the life of the vehicle quite honestly uh, because I mean, it's not even you know really registered yet he just got it yesterday I just cruise the neighborhood here and really enjoy this rear-wheel drive sedan. I love rear-wheel drive cars, so it's always, even though you can't break the rear end loose in this one, um, it's still better than front-wheel drive, and that is a hill I will die on. Thank you. And this little cul-de-sac here, we're in a more powerful car. I probably could light up one of the wheels. I need to take my town car over here and turn the traction control off. One tire fire, but this is not really gonna do that. Not with 114 horsepower, and they were 
you know, fairly heavy considering. I mean, it does actually have some safety features. You know, they've got the side guard door beams and the driver's side airbag, no passenger side one ever in one of these that I'm aware of. I think that those came out later and really required a redesign of the entire vehicle. And that's why we have, well, the updated 7 Series. 7 Series came out before that, of course. All right, well, I think I've used up enough of his gas and I have spoken everything I need to say about this car. I am really glad I got to drive this. Um, I am not at all disappointed that this was my first time in a 240. This car is absolutely fantastic for what it is. Someone could drive this as their daily driver every day and you know they wouldn't care that this was an inexpensive used vehicle. Except for the fact that the brake lights don't work, but we'll figure that out. We were messing with it before I decided to make my video and just uh, something's not right. Um, we were having the, the Kimsel was, was fading in and out when we were messing with the running lights. So there's something in the wiring or like the, there's like a membrane in the light that you screw the bulbs into. That's just messed up. And so we'll get that taken care of. But uh, again, I want to thank Troy and I really enjoyed driving this car. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Stay tuned for more awesome stuff here on Doug's Cars. Please hit subscribe if you've not already done that. And I will see y'all soon.